Hey, what's up, you guys? And welcome back to the Televised Podcast. My name is Anna, and today we're going to be talking about quite a few things. Um, one thing that I definitely want to kickstart the episode off with is just some thoughts on what's going on in the world right now because I think it's really, you know, it's important that I use my platform to, you know, talk about the important things that, um, you know, currently are mattering right now. Um, you know, obviously, obviously way more than, uh, any of our DC TV shows actually matter in the grand scheme of things, but um, that does not mean that we won't be talking DC TV because actually I kind of have something that I'm really excited about, so that's why I'm going to keep this beginning part kind of short. Um, but I am actually really excited because I got to have somebody else to talk to this week, which is, I mean, it's something that people have been asking me to do uh, for a while. Um, because I, I understand most of the podcasts that I listen to are more than one person uh, because they're just easier. It's easier to listen to a conversation, not just, you know, one person talking into the void. But today, I actually, I actually got to talk to somebody. It was so nice. I got to talk to Ileana, f- um, who you might know from Tumblr. I will link um, her Tumblr down below. Uh, she is really cool and, and she's always, you know, been really outspoken about Batwoman and about, especially about her identity as a Jewish lesbian, which is really cool because, you know, I mean, like I mentioned kind of later in our discussion, I feel uncomfortable sometimes because, you know, I, I'm not Jewish, so I can't necessarily speak to certain things and feel you know, I don't, I'm not trying to speak over anybody, um, and that will be definitely the same that I feel about once I get into this other topic, but yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm really excited, and I hope you guys like our conversation, because we talked for a really long time, um, so it's definitely gonna be a long one today, so buckle in, I hope you enjoy, because, you know, this Batwoman news really kind of hit hard, especially during this time where we're, I think realizing more than ever the impact of of media and of representation and, you know, especially with Kyler Lee just coming out. She just came out. She didn't label herself, so I'm not going to. But that, she, she said that playing Alex helped her to realize, you know, who she is as a person and, and help, help make her feel secure in her sexuality. And I, I think that's something so important and, and, you know, especially during this time, we have the black actresses of DCTV and black actors of DCTV, black actors on the CW, you know, black actors everywhere, you know, kind of banding together and, and requesting more and demanding more from Hollywood and from their peers. And and that's something that, you know, obviously is is such an important discussion to have right now. So... I definitely feel like we're, you know, kind of talking about something, things that are really important happening in the world right now, even though obviously Batwoman might not seem like the most important thing happening right now, and and I don't really necessarily think that it is, but I, I do think it's a discussion that needs to be had just because of other, two other minority groups that, you know need to be represented on television and and two groups that we need to have discussions about, which we did and i like i said i was so lucky to have somebody to talk to this time which which was so cool so i genuinely hope you enjoy that but first i just really quick want to talk about what is happening in the world right now i want to say first and foremost black lives matter they do they have and they always will black lives matter is the minimum black lives are important they're valuable they're everything and and i mean Last week, I took the week off because I was like, you know what? There are more important things in the world to focus on right now than, you know, um, talking about some something to do with Supergirl or with Batwoman. And that is, while that is very true, I also feel kind of guilty because I didn't, I feel like I didn't use my platform in a good way. So I, I genuinely am sorry to anyone who feels like, uh, um who does feel that way because I, I kind of feel that way too and and but I I really want to talk to this talk talk about this a bit because 
obviously we're facing a time in the world where where people are finally kind of starting to wake up to the facts and 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 uh, I think people are saying that enough is enough because you know what in my lifetime alone in just my time on Twitter alone I'm I'm 20 years old um I've seen so many hashtags I've seen so many protests I've seen so many riots I've seen so many movements I've seen Ferguson I've seen Trayvon Martin, I've seen, you know, so many, uh, Sandra Bland, uh, Eric Garner, um, you know, so many names. And I, I think this is kind of cool because people decided that after George Floyd was murdered, that enough is enough, um, which I fully agree. And so I, I, I will be linking a couple like GoFundMes and petitions and stuff in, in my, in the description and then of the episode so if you have not signed those things yet please 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 do um what's really cool is that the officers who murdered george floyd all of them have been charged um so far which is incredible but brianna taylor we are still looking for justice for brianna because none of her murders murderers have been arrested so if you know go down to the petition and sign this petition for uh, bringing justice to Breonna Taylor, who was murdered in her sleep. What we're what we're trying to do right now is get justice for Breonna Taylor, and also so 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 many more people who, unfortunately, their names have been turned into hashtags and and turned into rallying cries, and they, they didn't deserve it. And I mean, God, nobody deserves it. I just I don't know. I don't know. This is an uncomfortable conversation for me, as it should be, because I am white in America, and and I'm not conditioned to think about racism. I'm not conditioned to think about the way that black people suffer, but fortunately, because of me kind of growing up on Twitter and, you know, growing up reading, again, stories of Ferguson, stories of of Trayvon Martin, and, and, you know, obviously being really, really invested into this George Floyd story and and bringing justice for him, I feel, you know, I I am educating myself today and and have been for the past, you know, like 10 years that I've been on Twitter. So, yeah, I, yeah, so I just, Black Lives Matter. And and one thing that I do want to talk about, because obviously I talk about TV a lot and So Vanessa Morgan spoke out on Twitter and she said that she is the least paid series regular on Riverdale and that she's always been a bit dissatisfied with her role as Tony because she feels like a token character. She actually called herself the token biracial bisexual. And I agree. I have mentioned on my podcast before that I love Shoni so much, the couple. Um, But I also have said like, they don't when like they don't have a lot of scenes like when they do have scenes they're great but they don't have a lot of scenes and thinking about it too tony herself doesn't have a lot of scenes like she's always just cheryl's love interest and and that's horrible <laughs> especially because she's literally riverdale's only character well she she's their only black character on riverdale especially now that they've lost josie to katie keen Riverdale needs to do better, and and they released a statement that said that they would do better, but I, I think we all need to hold them accountable. I think, I think we need to hold all of our favorite shows accountable, like thinking about, you know, um, Candace Patton, who's had to suffer for so long because her castmates wouldn't stand up for her, her network wouldn't stand up for her, you know, against, um, you know, against pe- people who were racist and and they hated Iris just because of you know because she was black because they dared to cast a black woman and something that she mentioned was that it goes beyond just you know casting black people in in your shows you need to write for them you need to have hairstylists for them you need to have makeup artists for them you need to have black people in every sector of your production or else it's tokenizing and and disrespectful and it doesn't work you can't just make it work you can't force it to work so yeah i just everybody needs to send so much love to all of these amazing amazing actors and actresses who you know have been out 
you know, really, you know, doing good work today, you know? Um, same thing with, like, Cameras Johnson and, and McCod Brooks. They've been so, 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 so outspoken, uh, you know, about this. And one thing that I do want to address really quick is, is fandom and racism in fandom. I obviously touched on Candace Patton's experience, which was horrific. Um, and I need to look inward as well. Like, people have called me out in the comments before because I, I've joked about William dying on the show which is honestly not okay to say like it's not he's he's a character of color and supergirl has had a really 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 dodgy past with racism on their show like the julia free uh julia in season three she was this innocent black woman who supergirl and the deo barged into her house scared the shit out of her and then you know made her become pestilence because they scared her and they attacked her in her own home and and that was kind of framed as like not necessarily the right thing to do but it definitely was not reprimanded you know in any way like you know that nobody ever faced any repercussions for what they did to her you know like and the same thing about how they've treated kelly even though she's a series regular like she never has any meaningful things to do and uh, you know it's it's ridiculous so it's we just have to you know look both inwards within ourselves and how we talk about these characters like how we talk about James how we talk about William and 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 look at the show in a, w with a critical lens as well and and hold people accountable um and and I know a lot of people will say, like, you know, Makad has obviously said th some suspect things in the past, which he has, but that doesn't give anybody an excuse to be racist. Let me just say that. <laughs> like, it does not. It, it, you, no, no, no. No matter what kind of sentiments he has said, uh, you know, it, it reflects on your character that you turn to that, that you turn to racism when somebody says something that hurts you. That reflects back on you, not on them. So just, I think this is a good time for everybody to look inward on themselves and the way that we talk about these shows, the way that we talk about these actors, the way that we talk about these characters, and start holding people accountable, you know, within our own fandom, but also, you know, within our own shows. Like, I'll touch on this a little bit later, but Hartley Sawyer was fired. And truly, it's because of public pressure. It's because of what's going on in the world right now. I honestly think that if this was a different time, he wouldn't have been fired. He tweeted stuff that was vile and disgusting. Like, it wasn't even jokes. It was just, like, unbelievably racist, unbelievably sexist. There was things that he said that I would never repeat it was homophobic like he was just oh my god it was horrific and honestly I, I don't think that if this was a if this wasn't a time for change you know like everybody's feeling I don't think much would have happened honestly honestly so that's why it's so important to be loud on social media about not only about you know obviously I said we need to be loud about Supercorp this summer and I still feel that way but we also need to be loud about Kelly and about how Danson has been mistreated on the show. We need to talk about, you know, different minorities that have been treated badly on the show, different people of color that have been treated badly by the show. And yeah, it just, we need to, like I said, look inward at our own fandom and in our own hearts and in our own, our own selves. But also, you know, look outwards to our shows and and to the people who are responsible for writing these shows that have such an impact on people um so yeah so yeah i'll definitely put uh petitions and stuff in this in the description there'll be because there's one going around for vanessa morgan so i'll definitely put that one in there um i'll put the card the c-a-a-r-d um for all of the petitions that are useful in the Black Lives Matter movement right now. Um, specifically, look for the ones about Breonna Taylor, about Tony McDade, about all of those people because, I mean, seriously, just go down the list and sign the ones that you haven't signed. That's what I do every single day. I look at it and I'm like, all right, which one did I not sign? Well, time to sign that one. So, 
be loud, be, you know, it starts with us. It starts within our own selves and it starts within our own families and our own communities. And like I said, in our own fandom. So this is something that's, you know, really important. I am going to then let you guys listen to our conversation. I hope you enjoy it. We talked for a really long time. We had a lot of fun. Um, You know, we just talked about Batwoman and about, um, obviously, Ruby's departure, but then even more so the creation of this original character and how this kind of messes everything up. So, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy. And without further ado, here we go. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hi. Nice Hi. To meet you. Yeah, you too. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So much is happening right now. Like in like yeah. the two minutes since we before we came on, Hartley yeah. Sawyer was fired <laughs> from the Flash. He wa- Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw Kyler. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I thought she, like, slightly hinted at it before, like, last year, but I'm glad it's official. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, my God. And, like, so good for her. Like, it was such a sweet post. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's, she's precious. Like, while I wasn't a fan of Maggie's, like, I really enjoyed that whole storyline. Oh, same. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely in the same, like, iffy about Maggie boat, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, she, she's important to Alex, but she's not important to me. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> but actually, we're here to talk about Batwoman, mm-hmm. which so much <laughs> is also happening with Batwoman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, when, it, when it first came out that, like, Ruby was leaving, I was kind of disappointed. Yeah. Um, no, I wasn't the biggest fan of her. Um and I was like, okay, whatever, recast, I don't care. But now with this news, ooh, I'm I'm a little I'm a little upset. <laughs> yeah. Okay, really quick though, so first before we actually get started into like all of the stuff that we want to talk about, do you wanna like introduce yourself and what your kind of like connection to Batwoman is? Like did you know about the comics or are you just like a fan of the show? Just kinda like introduce yourself. Yeah. Oh, are we like already recording? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Cool. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna like put all of it in just because it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so fun. All right. Um, so I'm Eliana. Um, I did grow up reading the comics. Um, the New Fifty Two series. They came out in what, like two thousand six. Um, yeah. And I'm twenty three, so it was like I mean I obviously didn't start reading them when I was six years old, but <laughs> when I got a little older, I, um, I picked them up probably around high school when I finally like really came out as a lesbian um and I just I remember loving them so much because I'm Jewish and and gay and I felt just so represented by them um and then I someone had uh recommended to me bombshell series um, Mm. when I was in college so then you know I looked at those too and those were really fun um I am a graduate student at UPenn um I finished my first next master's degree this year um in counseling and mental health um and i am doing my second master's uh starting up in the fall um so the end goal is uh, after the two years i will be able to take the nce which is national counselor's exam so i can be a licensed therapist um for children and adolescents with a specialty spe- speciality in uh lgbt kids so um that's, that's so cool <laughs> yeah um yeah i'm into psychology and fandom stuff (laughs) (laughs) a great mix a great mix (laughs) um so obviously like we talked about a little bit ruby left the show she's gone yeah she is (laughs) which was so ridiculous honestly because i mean obviously she had a lot of like pushback at the beginning like how did you initially feel about her and how did you feel as like the season went on yeah, okay, so I was not very happy when she was first cast. <laughs> um, yeah. I had seen her, um, I had only seen her in Orange is the New Black, and her character Stella did not really impress me, talent-wise and acting. Um, I mean, I'm not one to judge because I'm not an actor, but I just, I felt no connection or anything whatsoever to that character, and I thought, oh my god, how is she going to lead a show that is 
that I'm really hoping and really wanting to be so good because the character is so important to me. Yeah. Um, so that was my initial thing. Um, and then I also thought, really, she has cross tattoos. Yeah. That's like a little thing, but also the fact that every time she'd be interviewed about, oh, are you about the character before it aired, she would talk about how much it mattered to her that the character was gay, but there was never any mention of the character being Jewish. Yeah. Which was also a pro- uh, like a problem for like all of the producers and writers involved because they would dodge questions like that when people were like, oh, is she going to be like the Jewish lesbian superior? They're like, yeah, she's gay. But <laughs> they would never yeah. like talk about her being Jewish and the- it was dodgy. And I think we never even... We didn't get any like bat mitzvah flashbacks or really, yeah, really, like core messages of yes, Kate is Jewish until post crisis, which yeah. did kind of annoy me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Even just like thinking about it, really, the only thing in like the whole entire first half of the show was they both had the necklaces. Yeah. And I and think that, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> and the Ghana thing to me is a problem as well because the initial that's not the reason that Batwoman wears red and black in the comics she does it because of a jewish reason because they're the colors that represent um war and judaism yeah raw, the color of severity and that is in the comics too so that like it's like a cute thing to connect the twins but yeah they can also use the real reason <laughs> like they can use both <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they ended up taking a lot of the red out of her suit anyway like there's not a lot of like red on her cape as compared to, like, the comics and stuff, which sucks, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's just... And, and I thought a lot of the Jewish stuff that they did do was a little tone deaf. Um, like, like I, I know maybe it's, like, it didn't come off as a big thing to other people, but to me, to watch... I think it was episode five, um, where Kate and Jacob were in, like... A the of, gas chamber? The gas chamber! And... I, okay, it maybe wouldn't have been as tone deaf if maybe they unpacked it. Like, either Jacob talked about it. Like, he wasn't going to talk about it with Batwoman. Yeah. Was Batwoman didn't talk to her, yeah. Jacob had talked about it with Kate. He like, this happened to me. You know, let's talk about it. Or if Kate had gone back to the Batcave and talked about it with, like, Luke. Mm-hmm. You know, I think maybe that could have been done better um but to just have that happen and nobody like be like oh that's like a really harsh jewish thing yeah <laughs> um <laughs> <woo. laughs> i know because i even like i'm not jewish i'm i don't really kind of like care ag- agnostic i guess or whatever but if I, I even like in my original recap of that episode i was like this seems like an issue This is not, you know, I'm not obviously the person to talk about it, but it's nice to hear that it was an issue, like... No, it it wasn't. (laughs) I I remember seeing that and being like, oh, 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 what the heck, oh. Yeah, like... (laughs) Gas chamber. (laughs) Ah. Yeah, and I mean, the CW has had, like, a really bad um, rap with Jewish characters just in general, like... Yeah, Martin Stein, that. like everything to do with a uh, crisis on Earth X, everything about that. So yeah. it it just didn't help. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it. I think everything the CW has done with Jewish characters has been slightly tone deaf. Like, there's never any like real Jewish culture. Like, mm-hmm. there's no mezuzahs on doors or mentions of Shabbat or like families. Like the like the closest thing to Jewish culture they had was Felicity Smoke's mother being kind of overbearing. <laughs> <laughs> like that that was it um, yeah um, I mean actually it's Martin Stein from uh, Flash and the Legends he's mm-hmm. actually he's actually pretty good I actually yeah. did enjoy his character but then he was killed by Nazis so yeah he was the only Jew, he was the only character to die in that crossover right on Earth X yes he was yeah, the Jewish man so yeah <laughs> fun time I know oh my god yeah. No, yeah. Oh, it's insane. But (laughs) so obviously before we found out about this like replacing Kate Kane situation, we thought that there'd be a recast. How did you feel about some of the people that kind of like stepped forward? Like or people like that got thrown out? Like Wallace Day was a huge one that people talked about. 
Um, there was someone from like magicians that people talked about. How did you feel about the different people that were kind of like putting their hat into the the Kate yeah. Kane ring? <laughs> um, I think I'm honestly a lot more lenient than most people with casting. Um, I'm a big believer that whoever can act the part the best and make it convincing, um, and as long as the creative team behind it actually has those diversity elements so as long as the creative team is making sure that they are writing for a jewish lesbian and they are you know they have jews on that team and they have lesbians on that team i honestly was like i don't care the background of the actor um as long as they are you know talented they can pull it off um it kind of reminded me of gentleman jack i don't know if you've ever seen that show i've heard Um, of it yeah so the actresses on that show they're not, I don't think they're part of the LGBT community. <laughs> um, but the creative team behind that show was just full of lesbians and full of historians who made sure they got the story right. And the actresses were talented and they had chemistry. And you could tell that the characters meant something to them. And they were very involved with like, like I, I don't want to call like the fans of that show like a fan because it was like a historical piece. And it wasn't, you know, it's not like a CW show. Um, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> but uh, I thought that I thought the show was done really well, and it didn't bother me that the actresses weren't lesbians. So I I'm more lenient with that. Um, there was one actress who Ashley Platts. She's she kind of annoyed me. I <laughs> like, cannot I was stand really her. <laughs> she's Jewish, and she is part of the community. So I was like, yes, this would be great. But her audition, like, why was she smiling so much? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And why, why is she, like, posting it all over her Twitter? Like, make me KK. You should have always made me KK. That annoys me. I know. She's, like, <laughs> and I talked about this before. I have such, like, a, not, like, a grudge, but just, like, I just don't like her. <laughs> and she's, like, on Twitter, like, hey, guys, I should be KK. I should have always, Ruby Rose, like, it's yeah. so much. I'm, like, inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, it feels but- unprofessional. Yes, Mark's reaction, not posting pictures of herself in a Batwoman shirt, but her, her just reaction to tweet, like, I've seen your tweets, thank you so much, like, I appreciate, like, it was, like, something really classy. Yeah. Like, that I can get behind. <laughs> that had me be like, all right, I don't know if you're, I, I don't know much of her background, except she was on Krypton, and she played, like, a pansexual character. Yeah. And people seem to love her, and she looks cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> her classy response like that made me be like all right I'd be down with that yeah and she is by herself too which is really cool as well so okay yeah (laughs) all right they should cast her sold yeah (laughs) (laughs) and she looks so I know I've talked about this before so people are like this is a rehash but she looks so much like Rachel Scarston it is ridiculous I'm like they're twins like hello Yeah, no, um, I would be down for her. I Like, honestly, I just want them to recast Kate as somebody who can do it and who the role matters to them. Mm-hmm. And even if it's not for personal reasons that it matters because it's, like, sexuality or religion, they know it matters, like, to the fans and to the community as a whole. Like, that's, that is all I need. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. And I, so, the re, the like, the actual reason that we're here is to talk about the new OC that they're putting in. Ryan, whatever the heck. I don't know how much to swear. <laughs> Ryan Wilder. And the press release says that she is likable and goofy and highly skilled, but wildly undisciplined. Which is not Kate Kate at all. No. Didn't it say she had, like, a drug running past, too? I don't know. I'm looking at this TV Line article, which is where, like, Caroline actually talks about it, which is like a nightmare, but yeah. it's oh it god. Like Caroline was pressured into doing this by Greg Berlanti. No, literally the headline says she recast she considered a recast for a hot minute, but then she changed her mind. I'm like Can we re- can we like change our mind back? Yeah. <laughs> Cause the thing is too, I have not seen a single positive reaction to this news. Like, you go under every tweet, like, comic book, you know, dot com articles, TV line, everyone is like, this is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. 
I'm not going to watch anymore. Like, that's the overwhelming feeling. Yeah, because <laughs> Kate, Kate Kane, whether you liked the character or the actress or not, she is the show. You yeah. know, the show is much bigger than Ruby Rose. <laughs> like, I didn't come to watch Ruby Rose, believe me. <laughs> I came to watch Kate Kane. And we watched Despite of Ruby Rose. <laughs> I, my favorite characters, my, my, I talk about this with my family. They're, they're all very supportive of me. They're all very straight. Um, <laughs> but they, they know how much, like, you know, these superhero shows mean to me, and specifically Kate Kane. Yeah. And, um, you know, they actually sat down and watched a couple episodes with me, and they liked it. Um, even my sister, who gave up on the Arrowverse a while ago. Mm. Um, because of actually because of Monel, and then she also didn't like. Shout out um, to hating Monel. Shout out to hating Monel. Um, <laughs> um, and then she also thought Magic in the Arrowverse was stupid, so she was like, "Goodbye." Um, <laughs> but they sat down and they watched, I think, the last few episodes with me. You know, because now we're all living together because of the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> and they really liked it, and they thought it was so cool that Kay King was Jewish and that every character was connected in such a way because in the last few episodes, you know, we had, you know, Raven and Magpie and just like everything come back all at once. And then Hush had Bruce's face and, you know, everything is just so connected. And then they were like, oh, who's that Julian Sophie? And I'm like, oh, they're both Kate's exes. <laughs> they're now. And they were like, whoa. <laughs> you know, they thought, they thought it was just like um, a well put together show. Yeah, because um, it, it was. <laughs> it was. My only qualm with it ever was the Jewish stuff that they kept messing up. Like, yeah. I thought it, I, my favorite Arrowverse season of all time was Arrow season two. Mm, yes. I thought that was really cool, put together well, and, like, I really liked Deathstroke. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, I like Batwoman more now. Like, yeah. I thought that was a near-perfect season of television. <laughs> yes. Oh, my yeah. God. Same. And I, I especially feel bad because, <laughs> I mean, maybe I shouldn't feel bad because they're doing this themselves, but yeah. I feel bad because, like, I feel the same way. I think it was like a near perfect season of television Mm -hmm. and they didn't even get to finish it. So it's like, it could have been, you know, this really well wrapped up thing and they didn't get to actually like complete it. But then now they're like, you know, throwing it away. But (laughs) I just don't know how they're going to connect all these characters to an original character. Yes. Yeah. Me too. Like Alice, her whole, she gave up, hurting Gotham now she just wants to hurt Kate so what is the like she killed Mouse yeah her only thing like (laughs) yeah there's nothing left for her if Kate's not around yeah um Jacob he doesn't know the only thing that makes his character slightly like humanizing is that his like is his relationship with his daughter yes exactly otherwise he's just the asshole hunting Batwoman who's actually saving the city He's leading a corrupt police force, and he left his other daughter to rot in Arkham. So he sucks. And he's not even nice to Mary that much. True, yeah. And then Mary's, um, like, the medic for the Bat team because of Kate. Yeah, she, like, it's my huge question is, like, why would they continue to care, any of these characters? And, like, obviously the audience, too, is, like, a bigger part, but, like, even just within the show... Like, why would Mary stick around for someone that's not Kate? Like, why would Luke stick around for someone that's not Kate? Like, you could argue with Luke that, like, his father was, you know, the Batman's tech guy. Yeah. Like, you know, his his thing now, too, generationally. But, yeah, with Mary, I mean, you could be like, well, she's so good and she does the right thing. But, like you really want to stretch her like that? I know. Just work on her clinic and her degree. She's not going to work with some rando bat woman. I know. (laughs) And like, she doesn't even have, I feel like if they'd been able to finish out the season, then it could have maybe been done better. Cause like they were clearly building something between Luke and Mary. Yeah. Cause I love them. Me too. (laughs) But their connection is not like super great right now. So like, if you take Kate away right now, they could like kind of break off and, kind of not care anymore I feel like you know it's like (sighs) yeah and it it makes me so sad because Mary actually is my favorite character on the show she's incredible Um, yeah which is actually what surprised my parents because I my favorite character isn't the Jewish lesbian it's it's Mary (laughs) um and I mean of course Alice is a very close second yes Um, (laughs) her acting abilities 
amazing. <laughs> Emmy, give her the Emmy right now. <laughs> yeah, and the tra- and uh, uh, you know, as a psychology person, um, the trauma storyline that they have done with Alice, and then also the, the little PTSD arc they did with Kate, like yeah, as well. Um, but mm. yeah, the the way they've handled Alice's backstory so well, just. Oh, like, how can you not love that character? I know. Oh, my God. She's insane. It's, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, like, one thing that I think really, like, bothers me is that they only had Ruby for 20 episodes. That's, like, 20 episodes of a show that they presumably want to get to, like, 100 yeah. or more, you know? Like, that's the main goal. Yes, yeah, exactly. And for them to value somebody else's face over this character that they want and this show that they want to continue for so long doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. I can't think of a reason why. Yeah, like even just, <laughs> not even show-wise, but also just comic-wise. Like yeah. They, they try to use Batman as an excuse, but the thing is, is that people have in the comics been Batman that's not Bruce Wayne you know they had people build up from being Robin or Nightwing yeah and it worked organically and it's been in multiple comics but no one else has worn the Batwoman cowl at least I, I don't think so to my comic knowledge besides Kay Kane you know yeah. it was it was a really big thing when they rebirthed her character after um Infinite Crisis which was a sequel to Crisis on Infinite Earths um they rebooted the character and it was like this huge deal and they originally wanted to reboot Batgirl like the artist and mm. redrawn Batgirl but then they were like oh no like she's disabled representation let's not take that away let's revamp Batwoman and then they made her a Jewish lesbian which was just so impactful yeah um, and like so Batwoman is Kate Kane like no one else in the comic has worn that cowl they will they've done such a great job of keeping in tune with comics mm-hmm. um that they would just be throwing out everything I know I know (laughs) it blows my mind (laughs) I know and it just for me too like thinking about the way that Caroline has handled this whole entire season like you said they've stuck so close and not not you know like criminally close where it's like you could have just like known the whole season based on the comics or whatever but just the relationships are there the fundamentals of each character are there I just don't understand why she would throw it all away I just can't wrap my mind around it yeah and it's it's also such a bummer that like for I mean mean, just like speaking comics wise that like crisis on infinite earths happened yes or we decided to dip I know um, because then they could have used that as an excuse you know like how you know the comics rebirthed that woman the crisis could have done it too like in the show so I know and that's one thing that makes me so mad about Ruby too I'm like girl I I understand you were sad. You hated it. I, I get it. I get it. But you couldn't have decided that before this major thing that could have totally helped everybody out. Like, <laughs> right? right. It's, it blows my mind. Like, I, I don't think we have the full story. And yeah. I don't know if we're ever going to get it. But if they're going to destroy Kate Kane as a character, I think we deserve an explanation. Oh, my God. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. And I think, too... There comes a huge problem, not only just in, you know, getting rid of, putting in this new, like, creating this new original character, but thinking about, well, how are they going to get rid of Kate Kane? Mm -hmm. Like, that's, I wouldn't want to mess with that if if I were them. You know what I mean? Like, because that means you're either killing your only, or not your only, but, I mean, really kind of their only, like, lesbian lead on a TV show, you're killing her. Like, you're gonna murder her. Yeah. You're gonna play into that trope again. Again. <laughs> again. again. <laughs> like, you're gonna have another Alexa backlash is what, is what they're gearing up for. <laughs> I know, that's what I mean. Like, you'd think that they would not want to do that. Like, I would not want to put myself or my show or my cast or anybody in that kind of position where you have to kill off this character that's like so important i don't know yeah and like we're not stupid if you cast a new person we know what's happening we're not gonna be like oh i don't recognize kk like we're not dumb i know and alice 
makes faces. Yeah. Like yeah, there, there are so many easy ways that you can just fix this. I don't I don't get what's so difficult. I don't I don't get I don't know if their all their creativity just magically evaporated because of the pandemic. I They had a lot of time to sit and they were like, What if we just undid everything we just did? What if we just undid everything? How fun would that be? Like, no. No, because really, if you think about it, there's no other way to get rid of KK on at the story that we're at right now. Exactly. The way they ended it, like she can't go off and find Bruce. That doesn't make sense. Because he's sense there. The he's there. You know, yeah, like oh yeah, yeah, he's there. But also, why does it matter if he's there if Kate isn't anymore? Exactly. Know? That's the thing too. Is like. Ryan Wilder would not give a shit about Bruce Wayne. Yeah, she's just, he's just some rich guy to her. Like, if she even knows who he is. Yes, oh my god. And I think, like, just story-wise, where are they going to find this person? Because if you think about it, it would make so much more sense, and I wouldn't even be mad about it if they were so dead set on getting rid of Kate Kane, if they put a character that we already knew into the bat suit like yeah. if they were like how about sophie moore into the bat suit like yeah because at least then you're not starting from zero with this character like how does this character connect to anybody in any way and how are we going to create like somehow create a connection in like two seconds yeah. in the opener like which will probably act as like a new pilot you know because this is a feels like a soft reboot in a way which doesn't make I mean, sense. I guess I wouldn't put Sophie in the bad suit just because she's already made. For, for me, I think her character is really interesting because she went through two arcs. Oh um, yeah, she had her coming out arc, which I thought was done really well, and she's it was beautiful. Yeah, making the big step, you know, to like be brave and be herself, and I think that's a huge life change on its own. Um, so throwing her into the bad suit would just be like a crazy other change. Yeah, <laughs> her other arc is like coming to terms with. Um, being the in-between of the Batwoman and Gotham and then the Crows and Jacob. And I think that's kind of an essential part of the show. Yeah. So for me, I think it would be a disservice to Sophie Moore to just throw her in the Batsuit because, I don't know, personally, I don't think she's fully ready to portray the Crows in that manner yet. Yeah. But Julia Pennyworth, she's worn the Batsuit before. <laughs> like, you could just put her in, I guess, because she was kicked out of her, whatever what, whatever her secret organization was called, I forgot. Yeah, um... um... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and she was she already had knowledge of the big bad that's coming and being set up for season two. So that would actually make way more sense than an original character. I know, same. Like and the thing is, like, in that way you're still not you I mean, obviously we'd be losing any way we do this, we're losing something, which is so unfortunate. Yeah. But <laughs> with Julia, like we would obviously, unfortunately, be losing that Jewish connection to Batwoman, but there's also no reason that they couldn't be like. She's Jewish. She's too. Jewish too. Like, <laughs> why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, like it sounds like in the original character that they're having, they're not planning to make her Jewish either. Yeah, um, I know. It's which it really does bum me up. I mean, if you look at the Jewish characters on the Arrowverse, there's Felicity Smoke, and she's dead. Um, so and she's you know she's oh yeah she's dead she's, she's like, dead herself, right? she literally <laughs> committed suicide basically suicide to, with Oliver Queen just left her kids also, just were her kids was was Mia Smoke raised Jewish because I watched all of the episodes <laughs> where she was in and I don't know uh, I don't know <laughs> I don't know either <laughs> um, and then we had Martin who we talked about who's um, also dead yeah killed by not he's very fun um, then there's Rory Reagan who was Ragman I don't know if you watched Arrow season five. Mm, no, um, but I have but heard of him. Yeah, uh, he's he's actually a very cool character, but he was only around for one season, and he his his powers actually were cool because they they were like the what are they called the Devarim rags, um, which he related them to like Moses and Israel, so it was actually like Jewish history in his character, which was done really well. But he was only there for one season, and then I actually okay, this is actually very strange and very funny. Um, I looked up, like, the Arrowverse wiki to make sure I hadn't missed any Jews. Um, <laughs> and Snapper Carr is on that list. Okay. Why is he? <laughs> Supergirl is Jewish. I had no idea. I don't know if it was mentioned in the show. I have no recollection. But, like, that's it. Like, Felicity Weinstein, <laughs> Roy Reagan, and Snapper Carr. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> 
why? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. That must have been like a comics like translation over like because I cannot. I've listen. I've watched Supergirl an embarrassing amount of times, and I cannot recall. <laughs> I cannot recall. <laughs> So I can't, I don't think we should give them those points. <laughs> yeah, no, like, if I can't remember, and believe me, I remember when characters are Jewish, because it's important to me. Yes, yeah. But if I don't even have any recollection, then you can't count it. So that's, like, three, four characters, and then the Canes on, on Batwoman. And yeah. that's it for Jewish representation over six different Arrowverse shows that have, you know, like, eight seasons, five, six, you know, like, and... That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it is ridiculous, especially with their track record and everything. Like, yeah. it's just, and I don't know. I just can't get over either why, like, especially if you if you erase Caroline from all of this and you're like, okay, well, maybe it was Greg Berlanti who said, let's just soft reboot. I can't understand why he would want to lose the you know that kind of representation as well like I mean maybe it's just because he doesn't care like I can't like you know there's just like I thought so I don't know hold on (laughs) hold on (laughs) is Mr. Um, Greg Berlanti Jewish um (laughs) but also he doesn't have a very good track record with lesbian characters anyway no and also just saying we can replace a lesbian with another lesbian is just also you know insulting (laughs) yeah Um, because we're not just interchangeable kind of thing yeah yeah he is not jewish apparently he said never mind i don't want to read that quote (laughs) oh oh, no do it do it (laughs) let's get mad on your podcast (laughs) (laughs) he just said well he's like my son thinks I'm Jewish. Nothing anyone can say, including my husband, will dissuade him from believing this. He just believes it. But I guess he says that his community was Jewish and Italian, but he's not Jewish. Okay. Strange man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let that sit. I'm, yeah. Uh, We're right. not going to talk about that. <laughs> I'm going to boy. <laughs> He's too much, but I just, I don't know. There's so many things to obviously, like, because what makes me the most mad is that Batwoman was so well-received yeah, as a first season. season. Yeah. yeah, like, that's the most positive press they've gotten for any Arrowverse show in a long time. Yeah. People are falling off the flash, you know, Arrow is done, obviously, and people liked Green Arrow and the Canaries, but it might not be a show. People are really mad at Supergirl right now. Yeah, super as as Supergirl's press has gone like has plummeted negatively. Yes, Batwoman has shot up, and it's just it's insane when you watch both of them at the same on the same night. Like I actually, because I'm so annoyed with Supergirl, um, I record Batwoman and I watch Supergirl first, and then I watch Batwoman afterwards so to feel better. <laughs> to just feel a bit better. Yeah. Like, like, all right, like, all right, Supergirl's trash. Goodbye, William Day. Let's go watch some Kate Kane. <laughs> Literally, I remember the episode of Supergirl, um, <laughs> or no, the episode of Batwoman, where I was really sad about, because it was one of Alice's, like, really upsetting backstory episodes. Yeah. And then I was like, now I have to watch Supergirl after this. I have to, I have to do and that. traumatizing that one. And then Alex went, Alice went through. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're going to make me sit through all of that and then make me sit through this <laughs> oh my god but yeah because batwoman has just you know it's it's still kind of building its fandom because yeah you know like upset fanboys like have been you know downvoting the episode since the beginning and there was like feminism homo- like homosexuality bleh, you know yeah um, but you know the fandom has like slowly like gone into it as you know, as the other Arrowverse shows have been like, oh, this is kind of disappointing. Um, people are like, oh, I hear Batwoman's good. And pe- more people have been congregating to it. Um, and now it's really got its footing on fandom and trending and reviews. And so it's just, like, why would you s- start from scratch? 
I know. You, know, you, you lose you lose the pe- you've already lost the people who had no interest in it anyway because they don't want to watch a lesbian hero. Yes. And now you're losing all the people who didn't want to give it a chance but then did and then ended up loving it. And then you might also lose the people who are just a big fan of Batwoman in general and connected to all these characters. So that's that's your whole audience, you know. Random <laughs> viewers aren't watching the show. The show is like a very specific fan base. I at least in my opinion what I think. Yeah. Um, I've <laughs> yeah I feel the same way as well and I feel like it's so unfortunate too because it just launched on HBO Max you know this is like a huge platform that HBO is like you know pushing and people are signing up and so this would be like a huge way to get more people to the show but with all this news coming out people are like well I'm not gonna watch this season to get yeah. invested in it and then it's gonna be totally different you know yeah I- I've seen people say, I recorded all the episodes finally, and now this news came out, I'm just going to delete the recordings because I don't care anymore. Exactly. You know, there's no point. <laughs> I know. How would you get attached to these characters if, if they're going away? Yes, exactly. And I, one thing that also makes me really sad is, like, I remember after Ruby left, Cam Russ Johnson tweeted, he was like, you know, we're going to continue to tell, like, good stories about LGBT characters and people of color, like, we're really excited for what's next, and you know, everybody was, like, so supportive, because obviously we're, like, you know, we'll be sticking around whoever Kate is, like, that was the idea at the time, you know, and now it's, like, who knows how long these other characters are even going to be able to be around for, because they don't matter anymore if Kate Kane is not Batwoman. Yeah, I can think of Luke might matter. Yeah. Jacob might matter just because he's the crow. <laughs> But now he'll just be, like, a villain, I guess. Yeah. He sucks otherwise. <laughs> like, he does. Um, um, I guess Alice might stick around for a little bit, and then she'll gracefully exit, which is a shame because Rachel Starston is... I think she's one of the most talented actresses on TV now after seeing her play Alice. Absolutely. Um, like, I have her at, like, Tatiana Maslany on this level. She's <laughs> up there. Black man. <laughs> um... <laughs> You know, like who? Like I guess Julia Pennyworth can hang around for a little bit. Yeah. Of the Pennyworth's connection to the bats. Um, yeah, that might be it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it just feels. Tommy Elliot was obsessed with Bruce. And yeah. Like, poor Kate, so you know he doesn't care anymore. Yeah, and like, it just feels wrong too, because it feels like not only a disservice to your characters, to your audience, but also to your cast. Who are so graciously sticking around after all of this madness happened. Like, they're very committed to the show, obviously. Like, Cameras was saying, like, you know, everybody was, like, so into it, so committed. And now you're kind of, like, putting a time stamp on all of these people. You know, essentially going to be putting them out of a job in, like, a year. <laughs> it just yeah. feels like a slap in the face to everybody. Yeah, and I think it's it's even sadder because I think I don't think it's just me who connected more with the other characters than Kate. I think most people connected with Mary and Alice and Sophie and yeah. and and Luke and it and it was also like a pretty diverse cast as Arrowverse casting goes. It's the um, most diverse Arrowverse show, and it yeah. is and one all of the characters the... are fleshed out. Yes, like they're not just like to- there's no tokenism in that show. Like there really isn't. Yes, there's not. You know? So, I, like, I really appreciated that show. Like, it, it, it became my favorite show to watch. Yes. Um, so it's, it's just, it's upsetting for the characters and then for the actors who, as you said, they've been very invested in the show. When they did lives or Instagram takeovers, like, yes. you could tell they, like, it mattered and they cared and they loved their jobs. <laughs> yes. I know. And even, too, like... <sighs> I I don't know. I keep thinking like, <laughs> was this on us? You know, not us in particular, but like, I keep thinking about how people reacted to Kate Kane and like, obviously. But I feel like that was supposed to be the reaction. So this is not my fault. But <laughs> it's all your fault, Anna. God, <laughs> it's all my fault. No, <laughs> but like thinking about throughout the season obviously people attach themselves to like you said Alice or to Luke or to Sophie or to Mary and like there were moments where I was like I hate Kate Kane in this yeah, moment up a lot. yes like, no I'll you're fine <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you I'll just believe it <laughs> I did it earlier though so it's fine <laughs> okay. 
But like, because there were moments where I was like, Kate, I can't stand you. <laughs> I cannot stand this puta right now. Like, when she betrayed Alice? Yes, that's... Oh, I was so mad. <laughs> and so, like, obviously there was a lot of people online that were like, you know, like, we can't stand Kate Kane right now, but, like, that doesn't mean we want her gone. I don't yeah. know if you, like, misread the room, Caroline, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, like, even if they saw, like, backlash of being, like, oh, if you recast Kate Kane, it has to be, like, all these specific boxes that you need to check. Like, I don't know if they were getting, um, I don't know, like, anxiety about that. Um, because <laughs> I know, like, you know, there were a lot of people who did not watch the show specifically because Ruby was cast. Yeah. You know? Um, and but, like, they can just say we're going to do better with the Judaism rep no matter who we cast. And I think that would have just helped. Like, they, it's just such a hot mess. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. And I think one thing that's really interesting, too, is that even though in the beginning of the whole, like, Ruby, post-Ruby frenzy, even though in the beginning there was, like, a lot of people who were, like, it needs to be this, it needs to be that, it needs to be you, it needs to be them the internet did kind of come together over Wallace Day a bit. Like, people were like, we like her a lot. <laughs> so if I were Caroline, I'd just be like, come here. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially because she's already in, like, the Warner Brothers, like, family. Like, she's already got that connection. I would have just been taking advantage of the people, what the people want. <laughs> like, they clearly, if it's the Warner Brothers connection, they have like connections to her contacts like to her agents and whatever yeah um i mean what whatever okay what what was it on sci-fi that krypton was on mm -hmm. okay. yes i don't know if their budgeting is like higher than a cw show and maybe she wouldn't want to go because of that but like, <laughs> i mean uh, we know they like, paid ruby a lot of money though <laughs> they paid ruby a lot of money for her to just quit <laughs> Right, yeah, with, like, so unceremoniously, too. like, well, we didn't even finish the season, but later. <laughs> I'll see ya. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I think, especially thinking about, like, because she was on, now I'm mad at Ruby again, but, because <laughs> yeah, she, oh my god, she messed up everything. She, we wouldn't be in this position if Ruby just had pieced out after Elseworlds, because yeah. really, that cross, crossovers are hard. But they're, like, a representation of kind of what you're getting yourself into, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, she, you know, she should have kind of known. Like, she had, like, four other people to talk to about the kind of work and the kind of stress that she would be under. Mm -hmm. Maybe if she just dipped after Elseworlds, it would have yeah. been so much better. Like, like, or even if she, like, realized, like, mm, maybe this isn't for me, I'll try it out, like, for the bit in the first, you know, the first season. But, like, after she shot the first half of the season around Crisis, she was like, yeah, this really isn't for me. I think I want out. That would have worked. You know, <laughs> that, that would have worked. I know. It w oh, my God. It would have worked so well. And we wouldn't even had to, like, explain it. It just, yeah. Crisis. Crisis. Face swaps. <laughs> there's, like, there's so many explanations for recasting KK. Like, I, I... Did, did, did Batwoman crew forget how to read? I don't, I don't know. I <laughs> Natalie Abrams, can you read? I trusted you. <laughs> <laughs> we trusted you. I, I love that show. I trusted that show. They gave us such good storylines. It was so creative and well thought out. Like, everything. Everything was interconnected. Like, all the villains, even the tiny ones. Like, it just yes. it worked so well. Like, come on, use your brains. You can do this. <laughs> you connected all the dots. Please connect the dots over here. <laughs> I know. We should send them one of those, like, connect the dots that spells out recast Kate maybe. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. Like, and I I just don't know where they're going to go from here. Because, like, obviously, I said before, but, like, nobody has had a positive reaction about this. Like, literally nobody. Like, I've seen people be like, I guess I'll try it out, but not, like, excited about it. No, nobody is excited Girl, about it. character. Everybody's like, Yes, Ryan Wilder. Like, <laughs> nobody thinks that way. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> and so I'm just like, are they going to see the backlash and, like, roll back on it? Like, I just, I don't know how they're going to handle that. Because they do have longer than usual this time to yeah. think things over. <laughs> and it is interesting. Like, the Arrowverse as a whole, like, they have to 
they're they're either really terrible at looking at their PR mm-hmm. or they just ignore certain things. Like finally, like like we said at the beginning of this chat, Harley Sawyer, he's out. You he's know? out. So they yeah. They paid attention and they saw what was happening. Yeah. So I'm hoping, unlike what Supergirl's PR team does, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I like throwing shade at them whenever I can. No, absolutely, they deserve it. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I'm just hoping that they'll see this and be like, okay, do we really want to mess up our audience connection this much? I know. And especially because (laughs) if they sever this connection with this audience that they have, Mm -hmm. there's no way to get anybody else on board because the Arrowverse banks on people watching a show like Mm -hmm. Supergirl and going to the other ones because they're connected. Yeah. But now, Kara doesn't know Ryan Wilder. Kara's not oh, going to yeah, know yeah. Ryan Wilder. She gave she gave Kate Kane kryptonite. She didn't give Ryan Wilder Ryan kryptonite. Ryan Wilder has kryptonite. Um, she's going to get laser beam. <laughs> <laughs> and like... Or not laser beam, heat vision, you know what I mean. Laser beamed. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm so done with Supergirl. I forgot what her powers are called. Just don't mind me. <laughs> hey, so did the writers. It's no big deal. <laughs> true. true. <laughs> I just also, I'm just... I'm very Arrowverse fatigued. Mm, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know if I'm going to watch Superman and Lois because mm. of the way that this network handles their superhero shows and fans. Yeah. Um, Green Arrow and the Canaries, maybe I'll watch because I actually did enjoy their, like, pilot-esque episode. And I, yeah. It was um, really good. I love both Black, Black Canaries, you know, so. Dinah Siren. Um, Let's go. <laughs> the smoke grew on me a little bit. Um, but, I mean, I'm. I'm kind of t- getting tired of Arrowverse shows because of how they're handled. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know if I'll really, I probably won't watch Batwoman if it's not KK. Like, I, I, I don't think I will. And it's very sad to me because it was my favorite show this year. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I the thing is that I'm, <laughs> I have nothing else to watch <laughs> like 99% of the time. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just like keep going. That's why I'm still here with Supergirl. Yeah. Not only is it like my comfort show, but also I just I like it. I'm I'll watch to the it. Characters. That's why I'm trapped. Like, yeah. <laughs> I I love you know Kara and Lena and Alex and now Kelly and Nia. Um, and yeah. Nia. And Brainy. Like, uh. Oh, Brainy. Yes, he's 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 the only man we trust. He's the only man. Oh my god. Well, also, actually, like, Jean. Like, I was very happy to see her back. <laughs> oh, same. Oh my god. I was like, can we keep her? Can we trade her in for William Day? Can we make a trade? Who's William Day? I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't have a personality, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> oh, Andrea Rojas. She's cool. Oh, like she her. is cool. She is um, cool. I hope they make more use of her as a grata. Oh, dude, I know. <sighs> See, <laughs> this is what makes me mad, too, is Batwoman handled Crisis very well. They did mm-hmm. something so cool with Crisis with the Beth storyline. Yeah. That was incredible. And then we had Supergirl. <laughs> where they were like, you know what? We're going to make Lex like the good guy. We're going to ruin everything. <laughs> we're going to we're going to take back everything. <laughs> like they're yeah. like we're going to set Akrata, but we're not going to tell you about it. <laughs> like as Arrowverse shows go, Batwoman handled it the best. The Flash was, like, in the middle. They, like, made, like, old films resurface, which was cool. And that's really kind of all they did. Yeah. Um, and then Supergirl, they're just like, let's throw out everything good that all of our female characters have ever done. <laughs> let's just erase it. Yeah. <laughs> we have to redo feminism on because of Crisis. It undid yeah. that. <laughs> feminism ended. Ended. <laughs> Car didn't get her Pulitzer. Went goodbye. Oh my god, it just makes me so mad. But <laughs> and one thing too that like thinking about Batwoman, it was like at least for me and what I've seen, like people who feel like like you said, like Arrowverse fatigue, Batwoman wasn't criminally connected to the Arrowverse or like, you know, yeah. so connected that I know people in my own life who don't watch Supergirl. They don't give a shit about Legends, you know, any of that. But they watched Batwoman because they like the people and they like the characters and they, you know. And it didn't matter about the crossovers. It didn't matter about this. And I think they're losing something 
<laughs> like, you know, like, that's another thing that they're losing. Like, it was a show locals could connect to. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like I said, my straighty sister <laughs> who gave up on the Arrowverse, she was like, you know what, I actually might, once it goes on Netflix, I will rewatch, I'll, like, watch it with you. And I was like, I would love to watch this with you. And she's, she's, you know, when I say she's straighty, like, she's like... Uh, she doesn't watch things um, a lot that have like a lot of LGBT stuff in it. But mm. she was very into Batwoman with with a few episodes she's seen, and Batwoman is not shy from being, you know, gay. It's not stuff. straight. <laughs> you know, she watched one of the episodes where it was like Kate and Reagan hooked up, and then like Sophie and like Julia like were kissing, and then you also were like, oh yeah, they're both Kate's exes. And, like, <laughs> just didn't even phase her because she thought that the story was good and the action was actually legal choreographed. Yes. Um, and, like, she was just, like, she kept asking me questions, like, oh, like, what, what's that book? Like, what does that do? Like, who's that character? Whereas, um, she, they also, they also kind of watched and stayed for, like, one, the Supergirl episode, mm. too. And they had questions, but they were more just, like, why is that happening? Or yeah. my sister was, like, I don't remember Kara acting like that. She's, like, is Lena a villain now? And I was, like, no. No. <laughs> um, they want you to think so. Was, like, Wait, did they finally make Lena and Kara date? And I was, like, no. And then she's, like, then why are they acting like that? And I was, like, <laughs> The questions we ask. The qu- I ask myself that every day. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And she was a Winara shipper too. So if she's seeing Supercorp chemistry, you know. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I was like, I was, I was Carol Olsen, personally. Me too. Yeah, but she was like, but when? And I, I think she's also just got a thing for Jeremy Jordan, but whatever. <laughs> You know what? Can't relate. <laughs> I fought him in 2017. I I can't relate. Oh, don't remind me. That was, ooh, that SECC traumatic. <laughs> oh. The real question is, is this worse than SDCC 2017? <laughs> ah, um, wow. Uh, <laughs> um, maybe. Maybe. Um, maybe. I'm, I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm hurting. <laughs> um, I mean, it is very invalidating, to be honest. Yeah. As, as you know, as, like in, in both my identities, as both Jewish and lesbian, because you know, with lesbians, we're not interchangeable. And yes. Jews, is, you know, we're not really represented. Yeah, um, and you so, shouldn't be erased. Period. Yeah. Like, because that was a thing that was so. I mean, it wasn't super important and super well handled on the show, but it was there. <laughs> yeah, like, and that should count for something. They always make improvements. Like, I yes. love this show. Like, they didn't, besides the gas chamber thing, they didn't do anything egregious. You yeah. Know? They were, they made Kate be very proud of her, um, her sexuality, but mm-hmm. they never, you know, gave her that, like, Jewish pride that I thought, you know, and, like, because it's a very intersectional thing, and I think that could have been a cool storyline that they covered, too. Yeah. Maybe, you know, they could have done that in season two. Um, yes. Because, like, Ju- Judy- Judaism, um, they are, it was, like, reported in 2019 that, like, the biggest hate crimes against a religious group were against Jews. So, like, it is, like, there have been, like, homophobia, but there hasn't been anti-Semitism on that show. So I thought that would be something cool that they could tackle, too. Yes, um, yeah, I know. And it would have been, it would have been, like, so important, too, because that's, like, and I mean, really thinking about it, like, that was, like, their flagship show like the cw like that was that and nancy drew we were like the two shows that they were like watch this i don't give a shit about my other shows yeah. this fall catch batwoman tonight like <laughs> they've given up on trying to promote riverdale because everybody yeah. knows that's a joke <laughs> um and the, the other Arrowverse shows are i mean actually besides legends they legends is amazing first of all. <laughs> Yes. Um, but they don't promote it. They treat it like it's, like, oh, the show that we, like, have to have on the air. And even, like, the <laughs> cast knows it. But, like, I know. Never. And then the, um, the sh- even the show, like, makes fun of it. But ironically, like, they have the best reviews of any CW show. And especially the best fan interaction. Exactly. Yeah. I know, like, like the... I don't know if you saw, like, their Twitter, like, the past week, <laughs> but some fan made, like, a Legends logo with, like, pride colors. And Legends was like, our logo has never looked so good and put it, like, as their Twitter banner or header or whatever it's called so like, like can we get more of that from like other first shows please maybe you'll i don't know i know and like they were also the writers of each episode were doing like chats kind of like this you know like where they would each go on zoom mm-hmm. and they'd talk about the episode i'm like supergirl would never do that because we'd be mean to them but they deserve it <laughs> they're afraid of us and they should be and they should be <laughs> 
me. They shut me. <laughs> One thing, though, and I just started thinking about it because, you know, we talked about Arrow and how it's not obviously on the air anymore. Like, we're, you know, it's it's something that the CW lost because that was their huge thing for so long was Arrow. Even, yeah. I mean, obviously it started to kind of, like, fall off at, yeah. at the end, but... Yeah. But people liked it for a while. <laughs> and one thing that Arrow was like super always, you know, kind of specific about was its darkness and how dark it was and how gritty it was. And people loved like that. that. Yes, people loved that. And people got mad when it got, you know, like you said, your sister didn't like magic and like, you know, it was more real. And I feel like Batwoman, even though obviously it was so entrenched into crisis and all of that kind of stuff it was really real and like down to earth and stuff. Yeah. And I'm thinking about the description of Ryan Wilder, like goofy and like, you know, just doesn't fit. witty or whatever. Like, I don't know what they're doing because I felt Gotham like, is supposed to be dark. yes. <laughs> and I felt like Batwoman was their dark show to replace Arrow. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. <laughs> What's, what's interesting with what you said about Arrow is, um, like, in season four when Damien Dark came and it, magic was introduced, yeah. um, the fan reaction, people did not like that. Yes. People thought it was bad. Um, so then when they, they actually changed it back in season five, and season five was really good because they listened to the fans and they made it dark again, and you had the whole cool Prometheus storyline. Yes. And they, you had Oliver Queen being very dark again and going through an arc of, like, do I enjoy killing kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they listened to their fans and it got, like, it shot back up in, you know, fan sentiment. Um, and that's, that's really just, like, what the Arrowverse needs to do. They need to listen to their fans because yes. they are fan shows. They're, this isn't, like, a masterpiece. Yeah. They're never going to win an Emmy for this. No. Um, Even know, though like, Rachel Scarston <laughs> should, she's never going to. Yeah, yeah she, she could. She could, but she won't. So. Yeah, yeah. She'll win all the fan polls, though. Exactly. <laughs> She'll win TV Lines Performer of the Week multiple times. <laughs> yeah, because it's voted by fans. Exactly. Shows rely on their fans. Yes. To listen to. <laughs> I know, and that's something too that's like that really annoys me about Supergirl is like people are like, well, these writers are telling the story they want to tell, but I'm not buying the story you want to tell. <laughs> talk to us all you want we don't want to listen I don't <laughs> I'm not gonna get on board with William Day I'm just not I'm not <laughs> like if they had introduced like I feel bad for Stas first of yeah all, because if they had introduced him as like a nice guy instead of like a jerk that literally Carr called him a toxic jerk and a yeah snake, and, like why do they keep thinking that introducing men as like really mean to Carr is going to make us like them I know it's, like I've loved Supercorp, obviously, since season two. I write Supercorp fanfic. I've yeah. seen a lot of it. I don't, I wouldn't care if they just gave her a really nice guy, you know? Yeah. And they had the opportunity with Brainy, who was a canon. Exactly! Um, oh, my know, God. I don't understand why they didn't just do that. I mean, I love Mia and Brainy together, so now I wouldn't want that. But yes. it's not difficult right, to write a respectful male character. And I know. Like, if they literally what they need to do. <laughs> I know. They literally have Brainy. Like look at him. Look at you know Look at him. Why can you not write anyone else? I know. And like that's the thing too is like I just Caroline obviously was telling a story that she was like so passionate about cuz that's one thing that I really appreciated from past interviews that I saw where she would talk about it. And, you know, she was, like, so passionate about telling Kate's story, and she's, like, a lesbian herself, which is super cool. I don't know why she's giving up on it. Yeah, I mean, like, I know it was probably important for her to just have a lesbian character. Yes. And I, I'm guessing that Judaism wasn't super duper important to her. Yeah, which um, so is really upsetting. Be part of it, you know? Yeah. But, I like, I really do wonder how much of this is influenced by Greg Berlanti. I know. Like, you know, whoever's up up top. The people to blame. Yeah, I know, really. Like, Mark um, Hedowitz, who's the... He's, like, the CEO, I guess, was what you'd call him, of the CW. Like, he weirds me out, but that's just me. <laughs> I don't know much about him, but, like, I trust your vibes. <laughs> he, he weirds me out. Um, <laughs> but I do... Yeah, I just... But in the end, it doesn't make sense. It's the same kind of thing where I think about... <laughs> like Supercorp and how it should be canon like 
thinking about how they're tanking the show in the way that they are. And it's not just, you know, like us saying that, like literally like normal ass people are like, we don't like this guy and we don't like the story that you're telling. It's the same kind of thing with Batwoman where it's like normal ass people are like, what are you doing? What are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, I know. (laughs) And people are like, well, it's for the money. It's for the this. It's for the views. But they don't get money if they don't get views or they don't get Twitter engagements or whatever. And obviously all of this reaction is super negative. So it doesn't even make sense in that way where it's like, I don't know. I just wonder, I wonder if maybe it was something to do with like Ruby Rose and her, this is purely, yes, this is purely speculation. But if in her contract, she said, I will, like, because really, if it, I don't know, there's, if they fired her, there could have been a thing where she was like, well, yes, I'm terrible to work with, and yes, I don't want to be here, but also, you owe me all of this money, or you owe me, because really, if she signed, like, a five-year contract, or six-year contract, they would owe her a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah, they'd have to buy her out. Yes. um, Unless she willingly quit. Yeah. Yeah. So if it was her, or if it was the CW being like, listen, this is not working. Everybody's miserable. We've had so many complaints about you. What if, what, what if they said, we'll, like, what if her term was like, you don't have to buy me out. I'll leave, but you can't keep going with this character that I've put my name on, which would, would be, be really so terrible. Cool. I know. Character. Like, she was there for 20 <laughs> i know this character has been around since 20 2006 she does not own this character i know much bigger than her bad acting you know self (laughs) i know but i just like that's one thing that i'm like what if that's the case because otherwise i don't think it makes sense but (laughs) there's got to be some weird maybe there's a stipulation in a contract there's got to there's like something funky going on yes you know, and that's why we haven't had the story on why she isn't Kate Kane anymore, and nobody's willing to like break the silence. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's just it's some there's something funky going on back, or there maybe they really are just so disconnected with their audience. It's just whatever's going on. It's just really sad, and yeah. they're only going to suffer from it because I'm I mean I'm someone who likes to occasionally rewatch my favorite shows or favorite episodes. Yeah. I mean, I was planning on rewatching the whole show in full. But I'm not going to anymore because now it's just going to make me sad if you know, like they came and all these connections and all these characters are going to have no significance anymore. Yeah, exactly. It feels, it feels pointless mm-hmm. and stupid. And that's one thing, too, that, again, it doesn't make sense, where they rely so heavily on Netflix and on streams and stuff, like on their app and, you know, like watching later like people don't watch the cw live (laughs) only me there's (laughs) only like five people watch the cw live (laughs) (laughs) me and you and the three other people watch the cw live (laughs) 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 but everybody else like that's why riverdale is trending like number four on netflix because nobody watches it live like people just wait for netflix (laughs) (laughs) so i don't understand because that makes Batwoman season one unsellable but that was one of their big selling points for HBO Max because they've got Katie Keene, Nancy Drew, and Batwoman on HBO Max as their only like CW properties on there. Oh I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah and it's not they're not going to Netflix ever so it's like that was one of like your things that you like said hey We've got all this DC stuff here. Like, look, it's like Batwoman and, you know, yeah. Aquaman. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Are they doing that now? <laughs> the movie is on there. <laughs> like, I can't take another arrow of our show. Please, no. <laughs> I can't, we can't do it again. We can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I just, it makes it, like, moot, you know? Like, it makes it, like, pointless. Mm-hmm. Again, it makes everything pointless. <laughs> it does. It does. It makes... And she's she's a paragon. Why are they we missing a paragon and a Justice League member now? I just I know that. Wait a damn minute! <laughs> <laughs> like they just formed the new Justice League. She's got a chair. She's in it. She her name she's is on the chair. 
her name was on the damn chair. <laughs> <laughs> she has spotters. <laughs> she called it. Like, they can't uncall it, dude. Like, <laughs> she called dibs on the chair. <laughs> yeah, like, I just imagine Ryan Wilder showing up. They're like, who's this bitch? Who, like, and that's one thing that, like, is so stupid. Especially because now they had just announced... Which, again, all of this, like, falling into place doesn't make sense because it just doesn't. Because they had just announced Superman and Lois would be the crossover with Batwoman this coming January when they finally got back to everything filming. That would be, like, the crossover for this whole thing. Superman doesn't know who Ryan Wilder is. (laughs) And he, he, like, just got acquainted with Batwoman. Yes. Just barely. Yeah. Tyler Hawkins, Ho- or however you say his last name, he wasn't like... Hecklin. <laughs> he wasn't like, um, really in it that much. No, he wasn't. He was really more Brandon Ruth, um, until he got KO'd by Lex, you know? Ouch. Um, <laughs> but, like, Kate was, like, a huge part of Crisis, and was kind of, like, the one holding Kara back from, you know, like, murdering Lex, and she kept Lex in check, and she was, like the really grounded one, I felt like. Yes. Out of all of the Paragons. Yeah. Um, what was she? So it just, she built a relationship with all these characters, and it, you're just throwing everything away. Yeah. What Paragon was she? Uh, um, courage. Courage, yeah. yeah. But it just... And they had... The, again, they had a whole entire episode dedicated, like, of their huge crossover. They had, like, that whole episode where Kara and Kate went to go see old Batman... Like, and it was poignant because of Kate's Kara and Kate to, to Bruce. Yes, and, like, and, to, and like her standing in between um, a antagonistic Batman and a super. Like, like she's so important to the Arrowverse now. They made it so. Yes, and and <laughs> and again, like I said, like this was like their flagship series. This was like, and obviously after Elseworlds, they like set her up to be the new, like, Oliver Queen, like, leader of the Arrowverse over, over Barry Allen, over Kara, over Superman, over, you know, anybody, over Black Lightning, over anybody that could have been the leader, you know, the new leader of the Arrowverse. Yeah. Ryan Wilder is not gonna do that. <laughs> no. Ryan Wilder is goofy. She can't She's leave. goofy! <laughs> she is, oh my god. I don't get it, man. <laughs> I don't get it either. I had something else that I was going to say, but I forgot. Oh, my God. I'm just so angry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's really upsetting. Like, I've been I've been upset about it, like, since the news came out, that they yeah. were just going to do a new character. Like, I, I, was, I was a little bummed when Ruby quit, but I was, like, upset, upset with this new character thing. Yeah, me too. And, like, I remember, like... The news broke, like, what, three nights ago? Four nights ago? I don't know. Time isn't real. Time doesn't matter anymore. (laughs) Time isn't real. I don't know. But I just was, like... Because I figured that that thing was fake. Because, obviously, the casting call leaked before the news actually, like, broke, you know, officially. And they did all these interviews with, like, Caroline and everybody. Yeah. I figured... I was, like, this is stupid. (laughs) I thought it was a joke. Yeah. I I, th- I thought people were like leaking it to like I don't know scare For, us <laughs> like, into our worst like, nightmare. Like I thought I really just thought it was like a mean troll prank. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Oh my god. And I've seen okay. I've seen people speculate too. They're like, what if this is Kate, but she's just in a disguise or like not in a disguise, but like I've seen people say like, what if it's like a fake out? where they'll bring in this new character. Turns out it's actually Kate with a different face. I don't know how I would even feel about that because it still kind of, like, undermines the importance of Kate Kane and their whole thing, and I don't know how they would go about doing that. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Like, it's... If they wanted to do, like, a face explanation, like, they could, like, do something and have Alice do an arc where she's like, this is my last thing I'll do for you. And like yes. give her, her sister like a new like face transplant or whatever. Um, but like also they could just ignore it. Um, I know. And just like have the new face. And then, or they could just, I don't know, ha- like 
because there is magic in the Arrowverse. Like Barry Allen could just, you know, do the do the thing again. And do like, the running. And stuff up, and now Kate Kane looks different. I don't know. Um, or the Legends could do something messy with magic. You yes. Know, like there can be so many explanations because the Arrowverse has magic and face transplants. And the they've got two things. <laughs> they, <laughs> they have two whole things that they could do. Well, yeah, that like any other kind of show doesn't have. So. I know, and we could when, do it. I know, and like thinking about Dynasty too, which is another show on the CW. They've had to switch actors, like they've had to switch like multiple characters, actors on that show because they've had the worst luck. I think that they've literally lost like three actors on that show that they've had to since recast. <laughs> Wow. Not for the same character, but they've definitely gone through two of someone. I don't know. Oh my god. I, I don't know anything about that show, but that sounds messy. <laughs> it is messy, but... <laughs> but, like, if they can do it. If they can do it multiple times with multiple different people, and it's still on, and, like, locals love that show. Like, yeah. that's, like, an all-American kind of show, you know, like, where people really, like, found it on Netflix and, like, loved it. They can do it with this show, and we wouldn't be a, a stu- we're not dumb. <laughs> we could figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody who's watching Batwoman is like a child who would be like, "Who's that?" You know, like I don't think children really watch that show. <laughs> you know what is uh, funny though? Dark. You know what is funny though? On HBO Max, I shit you not, it is under the children's TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no um, child should be watching this. I hope no parent makes that mistake. I know! Um, not because it's gay, but because of um, the gore. Yes! I can barely watch it. I am 20 years old. I can <laughs> barely watch it because it makes me want to vomit. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like people die on that show. It's <laughs> in very gruesome ways. People are dying. Like, <laughs> Kim, people are dying. I just... <laughs> I just don't know. It's just so ridiculous, and I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe we'll see what happens. Yeah. It, like, this is, like, a period of pause, I think, for most shows. Yeah. Um, and, you, you know, my, my thing is maybe they'll swap out, because Batman was, was supposed to be in the January lineup with the other of our shows instead mm-hmm. of, like, Legends and Supergirl. Maybe they'll swap one out and, like... Um, give Batwoman more time to, like, figure out what the heck they're gonna do, mm-hmm. um, but... I think that's I a good know. idea. I, <laughs> I think that's a good idea, personally. <laughs> <laughs> Make it Legends, though. They don't need time to think. Supergirl yeah. and Batwoman Listen, need to Legends sit in the corner. Stuff together always. I love Legends. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Batwoman and Supergirl need to sit in the corner and think about what they did. Know what you've done. <laughs> until May, okay? Like, they need to sit in the corner in until the May. Box. <laughs> like, literally. I just... I don't... I, I, I can't. I just can't. I don't know. I, yeah. It's just too much. And... We've been talking for a long time, but thank you. Oh, no, oh man, I'm sorry. I no, know. no. Thank you so much for talking with me. and and Because obviously, I, you know, when I talk about Batwoman, I don't have, like, the whole entire, like, connection, obviously. Which sometimes I feel, like, not necessarily uncomfortable, but I... Like, I was talking about with the, like, gas chamber episode. I was like, guys, I don't know how to feel about this because... You know, it's not my place to determine how people should feel about that kind of stuff in terms of Judaism and, and things like that. So it was really cool to hear your perspective on this stuff. Yeah, thank you, you know. for having me. Like, this was really yeah. fun. And, um, like, for future reference, like, when you talk about stuff that make you feel uncomfortable and you're like, I don't know, you know, how Jewish people feel, like, I actually really enjoy that um, personally because it's making me feel like people are thinking about, you know, other minorities that are probably like, oh, you know. Um, so it, it's... I don't think you should ever feel, like, worried about, you know, trying to speak for, like, for, you know, the Jewish community. It gives, like, a good, fair criticism. Um, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, it's something I appreciated when listening to that podcast. Well, thank you, because I, like I said, I just, I didn't want to feel like I was speaking for anybody. No, 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 it didn't feel like that at all. Yeah, but I definitely <laughs> do like, think... Thank you, Gentiles, notice it too. Thank <laughs> you, <Goyen>. <laughs> <laughs> No, definitely, like... But you know what, though? Like, that episode was ridiculous. I think everybody should have kind of been like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> like that was like y'all <laughs> The, it made some Jewish people who gave it a shot be like, "All right, I shouldn't have given it a shot." Yeah, it, it yeah, it definitely it woof, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was too much. It was, yeah. but yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. Thank you so much yeah. for being on and talking. And it's so funny too because actually, I had somebody in one of my YouTube comments before say that we should like talk. <laughs> Like, oh, really? so this is like, <laughs> so this is like an epic crossover that, we, that we've done. <laughs> wow, I think we did a better crossover than Crisis, to be honest. I think we did. <laughs> Still but a better Crisis. Good, <laughs> yeah. Sure <laughs> 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 I mean, as a general rule, I just don't read the comment section. <laughs> I, no, I have some good comments, but some people oh. I have, some people have been like, please go away. I don't know why you're here. But anyway, no, that was really like, <laughs> that was a funny comment to get. So I was like, you know what? Let's, yeah, epic crossover. <laughs> yeah, because I guess on my Tumblr, like, people will send me asks about Batwoman and I'll just like rant for a bit or like compare it to other airbrush shows or like rant about Supergirl. So that's funny that somebody saw it. Because I guess not a lot of people talk about Batwoman like that, or, like analyze it the way you do. Yeah. Or, and they don't compare it to like Supergirl or the air- other airbrush either. So. Yeah, yeah, it is weird because like thinking about. Sorry, I we're just keeping going, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll end it soon. <laughs> uh, like thinking about it too, like Entertainment Weekly does those like Supergirl recaps, or they do like Legends recaps, or whatever. And people talk about like I I don't know people don't talk about Batwoman a lot, and I'm like, yeah. dude, talk about Batwoman. It's so yeah. good. It was I think the best. It was so good. <laughs> of any Arrowverse show and I think it was the best Arrowverse season that was on this year so yeah I, I think it deserves more positive reception and positive attention and more people to talk about it yeah exactly I th- I mean honestly it was one of the best CW shows this year up yeah. there with like which I personally loved Nancy Drew I think are it's you watching I still have to watch that. you gotta watch Nancy Drew oh my god <laughs> it is so good and actually sorry <laughs> this is like another thing but the way that they handled the COVID, like, shutdown, because obviously they didn't get to finish, it felt like a complete season. Like, it, it did, yeah. It, it was a cool cliffhanger. Um, there was an emotional arc. There yeah. Was, each character was pretty featured. I mean, I wish Sophie was featured a little bit more, but... Oh, yeah. Same. I mean, it, it felt like a complete season. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Yeah. So... Anyway, I think we've covered everything and then some, <laughs> which is really nice because I, it is nice to like, when I talk to myself on my podcast, it sometimes feels like talking into the void. So this is really lovely. Thank you so, so much for coming on. Yeah, I um, to be your void anytime. <laughs> um, and I will definitely like leave your Tumblr and your links and stuff in the description for anybody that wants to find you on the internet because you obviously have yeah. very very cool thoughts and thank you you're, you're obviously <laughs> I've been listening to your podcast since we started it oh thank you <laughs> but and you're welcome to come back anytime honestly like let's do yeah. it again oh my god the next time that batwoman does some some crazy shit we'll, we'll be back we'll, get together again. <laughs> we'll be back <laughs> Crossover part two. Oh my god. (laughs) Hopefully it's to respond to the fact that they have changed their mind. Hopefully that will be infinite (laughs) lesbians. Hopefully yeah. (laughs) Hopefully we'll talk about Greg Berlanti saying, sorry, we're actually keeping Kate Kane. (laughs) Hopefully that will be the next topic. But yeah. Crossing our fingers. (laughs) Hopefully, hopefully. So thank you guys so, 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 so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed um, our conversation. Um, It's definitely really fun to have somebody to talk to. Um, (laughs) And yeah, so I will see you guys probably next week, maybe the week after. I don't know. I can't decide. I'm trying to decide between weekly episodes or bi-weekly episodes. I don't know. We'll see leave me suggestions for things that, um, you want me to talk about. Um, let me know if you liked, uh, our conversation that we had, if you liked 
me not just talking kind of to myself <laughs> um and yeah so like subscribe share rate whatever do all the things and i will see you guys next time bye